So this is how we add colors to these circles. And so the next thing I'm going to do is explain how to make a pie chart. And to make a pie chart, you need to use this thing called d3.layout.py, which is uh, a, a layout of D3, which is really a data transformation. D3 has all these various layouts, like chords and hierarchies, and we're going to use this one called pi. And so this example is like a very basic thing that just shows how to invoke this pi layout, this pi transformation. So we can call d3.layout.py to create an instance of this layout. And then we're loading the data and parsing it just like before. And when the data is loaded, we call the render function with the data. And um, actually, now that I think of it, this, this could be outside here. <laughs> Sorry. But anyway, this is, this is how you set up the accessor function for the values of the pies, of the pie slices. So you say pi.value, and you give it a function of the data elements that are read in from, from the table. So each D here is a row of the table. And so it just accesses D at slice size column, which is population. So it just gets the population values out. So this value accessor is a, is a function that gets the values that, are, that correspond to the sizes of each slice of the pi. And then to apply this transformation, you just invoke pi with your data, and pi is our instance of d3.layout.py. And then here I'm just displaying, the code is just displaying the data as JSON right here, so we can see it. And I'll just run through this in case it's not clear. We're appending a pre-tag to the body. So a pre-tag is an HTML tag that, that shows you pre-formatted text, where it's all monospace like this, like code. And then we're setting the text of that element to be a JSON serialization of this pi data that came out of the layout function. And these are just parameters to make it indent by two spaces. And so here's what we get out. Each, each element in this array corresponds to a row of the input data. And the original input data is exposed in this data property within each of these objects. And the D3 pi layout adds these values it computes these values and puts them in these objects. So value is just the same as population because we specified that as the value function. And this is really what the pie layout gives you. It converts everything to angles. So it gives you a start angle and an end angle in radians for each slice. And I'm not sure, I haven't really used pad angle. I think if you specify padding, you can have like some space between all the slices but I don't have an example for that. <laughs> so yeah, it gives you these, this is what d3.layout.py does. And this is meant to be used in conjunction with um, this arc command, d3.svg.arc. So d3.svg.arc is just really designed to take the output of a pi layout and convert it to an SVG path or to a set of SVG paths. So let's see what's going on here. Uh, we're creating an instance of this arc line generator, this arc path generator. There's pizza in the back if you want. And so when we create this arc, uh, this arc thing, we can set the inner radius and the outer radius. So if the inner radius is zero, then it will be a pie chart. But if the inner radius is something other than zero, it'll be a donut chart. Uh, so we're just setting the outer radius here to be 100. And then after the data is loaded, it calls this function. We're setting up the pi layout, like in the last example. And then I'm just extracting a, the first element from that pi data, which is, represents a single slice. And then I'm passing that into this arc function, this d3.svg.arc instance. And then I'm just showing that string right here. And so this is what you get. It's uh, m 
six point something, you know, it's kind of a cryptic string, right? But this string is an SVG path string, and it uses these um, elli elliptical arc curve commands that are in this little uh, domain-specific language for encoding paths that, that SVG uses. And so here's like the, the SVG standard that it's like, you know, there's all kinds of little, little nuances. And, but basically you can take this string and pass it into the D attribute of an SVG path element, and then it will render that slice of the pie chart. So this is what d3.svg.arc is for. And so here we put, we put it all together and make an actual pie chart in this example. So let's take a look at what the code is doing. So let's see, setting up the x-axis and everything like before, this, this line of code adds a group element that will contain the, the slices of the pie chart. And then we're creating an instance of d3.layout.py, an instance of d3.layout.arc, uh, setting the inner radius to zero and the outer radius to radius max, which I extracted to a variable here, so it's easy to tweak this. So I set it to 80. So 80 is the, the radius here. And then in the render function, we're setting the pi accessor function to be a function that extracts the, the value for the slice size column which is set up at the top of this file to be um, population of each country. So we're invoking the pi layout to get this thing I'm calling pi data. Um, this, this line of code puts it in the middle. This will translate the pi uh, group to be in the middle of the screen. Yeah. Um, I think without this, it would be in like the upper left corner. And so we're taking the, that pi group element and transforming it by inner width over two and inner height over two, which puts it in the middle of that, the inner rectangle of the visualization inside the margin. So that's why it's in the middle. Uh, yeah, we're, we're not using the X scale like we were in the previous example. So this will be replaced by code that uses an X scale in the version with small multiples, but right now it's just hard coded to be in the middle. And uh, let's see, this is, the, this is the D3 code that actually makes the pie chart. So pi G, which is the, the SVG group element that will can, contain the slices, dot select all path, because remember each slice is an SVG path element. And when we're binding the, the pi data, which is the output of the pi layout to the selection. And so on enter, we're appending a path element. And then the update phase will set the D attribute of each of these path elements to be this arc function. Or rather, you know, this is a function that gets called for every element of pi data. And then the, the return value will be set to the D attribute of these slices. So if we inspect the DOM, we can see what's going on here. Um, each slice is a path element. And here the group is translated. So if I change this, yeah, see, that's that's the effect of that line of code that, that tra you know, translates it. And so the D element is this like cryptic string that's an SVG path string that gets generated by d3.svg.arc. And then the fill gets assigned um, the same way as the, as the color was being assigned before. We're accessing the color scale you know, of the, the color column data. So this is it. This is how you can make a pie chart with D3. So in this, in this next example, we're just adding a color legend. So this was covered in a lot of detail in the previous tutorial, so I'm not going to cover how this really works. But we're just using this D3 legend package to add a color legend here. And this is a donut chart. And the only difference between the pie chart and the donut chart is this inner radius. Rather than being zero, 
uh, you hear it set to 40. So this is what it looks like if the inner radius is half of the outer radius. So yeah, that's how you can use a donut chart. And I've I've heard people say that donut charts are more readable than pie charts, but I'm you know I'm not really convinced. Like I'm not sure exactly why, but it kind of makes sense because it's almost like a stacked bar that's sort of twisted around. And so I don't know. There are arguments to be made that donut charts are superior to pie charts, but <laughs> I don't I don't really know. And then there's this other one. Um, so I wanted to just explore how can circles be, be used to represent data, and this is. This is something that I don't see often in D3, but I knew that this kind of visualization existed. So I'm like, well, how, how could you do this in D3? So what's going on here is the, angu the angle of each, you know, the angular width of each slice is the same. And then only the area of that arc is changing. And notice how in this one, you can actually see the Jewish segment it's that tiny little triangle right there. But in the previous examples, you can't even really see it. It's just so small. So it has this interesting, you know, interesting effect where you can see the smaller thing in this with this layout. Yeah. So this is still based on area. So like it's it's a true fact that the area of each one of these slices corresponds directly with the va the value, the, the number of people in each of these religions. Yeah, I mean, because, oh, actually, that's a good point. Well, actually, if you think about it like this, though, the full donut is a, like a fixed area, and you're taking fractions of it. So I, I think it is still proportional. I think, yeah, the area of each slice in the donut chart, I think, is the area is still proportional to the data, but it's just squeezed in different ways. Um, so, yeah, this is called a polar area diagram. And this was first popularized with um, this great visualization by uh, Florence Nightingale in 1858 of the, the causes of mortality and going around these are these are months of the year and these different colors represent mm, oh deaths from pre preventable diseases uh, so it's different kind of diseases you know correlated with t different times of year so that would be interesting to, to, to do like stacking within each slice I haven't figured that out yet though So yeah, it's called a polar area diagram. And this is what the, the code looks like. So again, we have a pi group. I'm still calling it pi in the code. And um, the radius scale is still the same. It's a square root scale. Because if you think about it, if you adjust the radius of a slice, the area is still like proportional, proportionally um, the area still corresponds to the data, even if it's not a full circle. I'm pretty sure. So, let's see. Uh, here, this is the, really the only piece of code that's different between a pie chart and this, this uh, polar area diagram. Is that the outer radius of the arcs is now a function of the data. And so the outer radius for each slice will be the radius column, you know, passed through the radius scale. And somewhere the angles are set to be constant. Here it is, pi dot value return one. So this is saying, you know, basically make all the slices of equal width angularly uh, because they're all going to be one. It's not really a function of the data anymore. And then everything else is the same. So yeah, just these two things that are different.